All right, guys, welcome back to the Buck Fever podcast. Should be another quick episode today with me and Jake. And as we get into the middle to end of December here, it kind of seems like everybody's starting to get a little bit sick and tired of deer hunting. I know uh, Jake and I have kind of been feeling that way, right, buddy? Yeah, I mean, hard to say you get sick of it, but more so just burned out, I would say is a better word. Yeah, you need a little a little refresher, something to sort of cleanse your mind, cleanse your palate, and then, right. uh, you know, probably by March we'll be itching to go for next season again, but once you have however many weekends in a row of sitting in the tree and, you know, you you give it, you hunt pretty hard throughout all those months and... But by the end of it, you know, you're kind of ready for a little bit of a break. So we thought we could kind of do a quick little episode here on what that transition looks like for us and where we sort of focus our attention. Um, You know, I'm sure, especially with the holidays, everybody's going to be spending some time with family and, you know, having a little bit of relaxation in there. But, uh, you know, especially for certain people, enough time with the family is just going to make you want to get back out in the woods that much more uh anyways so thought it'd be a good idea to kind of share what we do over these next couple months and maybe give you guys some ideas if you're sitting in the house board just anxious for the next thing we we probably got a couple ideas for you so um yeah i know one of our one of our favorite things coming up here is small game hunting we typically do that quite a bit um, during these next couple months, I know you even go out a couple more times than, than I'll go Jake. So you're probably a better expert on the topic, but it's, it's something we do together and have a good time on a nice cold December or January day. I love it. I think killing them things is so fun. (laughs) Frustrating, but fun. Um, lately I've had a lot more luck rabbit hunting. I think we both have. We've, I've killed a lot of rabbits in this last couple of years, which has been pretty fun. I've been in a few tournaments, which is also really fun. I mean, you know, you know, just something to do on, a, like you said, a nice cold Saturday. It gives you something to look forward to and go do or then, you know, meet up at the local bar or whatever it's ran through and hang out, you know, just have a good time that way. So I, I really enjoy it because it gets me out of the house. Yeah, 100%. I mean, usually what that day is going to look like is it'll be a do you do you like sunny days or cloudy days better um sunny days for squirrel hunting cloudy i don't really care for rabbit too much because those things we're going to get them they're not coming out for us type thing so rabbit i'd say it doesn't really matter it's nice if it's not you know 40 mile an hour winds and freezing that makes it a lot more enjoyable but uh squirrel definitely like calm and sunny yeah yeah, you get a nice, calm, sunny Saturday or Sunday or whatever, and, um, you know, it's nice because you don't have to be out there at the crack of dawn like you might right. for deer season. You can sleep in a little bit, head out there, and, you know, if you get started by mid-morning, hunt for a couple hours, you can call it quits and get back home before dark. So it's nice that way, too. You get a little bit of exercise. You stay a little bit warmer because you're probably moving around a little bit more. We'll stop and take a break every now and then, hunt from a, a certain spot. But, um, you know, for the most part, you can keep warm, kind of traipsing around. But um, usually we'll hunt squirrel and rabbit together at the same time. I mean, obviously, when you're in a, a rabbit tournament, like you said, Jake, you'll only be doing that. But if it's just you and I going out with our small game licenses will pretty much hunt both of them at the same time. Sometimes we'll even sit down with the call and try and call in a yote or a, a crow or something, which, you yeah, know. I guess pretty much anything that falls under that small game category is fair game when we go out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not that we've had a ton of luck with coyotes or crows or any of that stuff, but we try anyways. Right. I mean, the crows, we've had some luck with them. The oats, I don't know. I guess we haven't tried hard enough, and I think those are more of a night activity. Yeah. So. Man, you want something hard to hunt. Crows. They're not easy, and you wouldn't think it, but 
They're tough hunting. They're stupid, but they're tough. Yeah. Like, you, you throw up that crow call. You can either just have the crows going or you have a dying rabbit sound or you put both of them out there at once. And you'll have a flock of them come in, but they they know to be like 70 yards up there so they're out of range close enough to taunt you but just out of range to where you can't poke at them and then they kind of dive a little bit to where you think you might want to take a crack at them but if you do you're probably going to miss and then you're going to miss all of them but then that you know fear of waiting too long and they don't come in then that kind of starts to creep up on you and we have had many 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 more times not being successful crow hunting than we have being successful. Oh man. Yeah. But that's very true. But I've also shot at so many crows. I think it's more, it's more fun. Like, you know, the action is there. Like you're, you can sit down anywhere and call them a crow. Yeah. And that's, what's fun about it. Cause like, you don't have to be all, you can be on public land. You can be wherever and call a crow. In. And you know me, I always, I was sky blast them. I don't care how far up they are. Um, you know, I mean, the one we shot last year, that was, I shot him with the 12 gauge like three times and they got <laughs> away and we tracked them through the woods and, and I shoot at 22. I mean, yeah, yeah, they're just so tough. Yeah. That one, I don't know how he made it. We, we were tracking a crow on a blood trail, dude. Yeah. Like that is, <laughs> not many people say they do that, but you know, that's winter entertainment for you, man. Yeah, I mean, I would do it over again. <laughs> That's a good call, though. The With crows, like, you can walk through the woods and have a hard time finding squirrels sometimes, but you can call in crows from anywhere. Right, for sure. Anywhere. But you brought yeah, up a... That, that's the fun part, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. And if you're out there, like you said, you can do all of the above all at once. You can, you know, make a day out of it. Right. You don't necessarily have to pick one or the other if you got the proper licensing requirements and everything. But you mentioned with that one instance, you were rocking a 12 gauge and I had a 22, which is something we just started doing last year. So I kind of want to get your take on uh, your weapon of choice out there. Obviously, for rabbit, I love the 12 gauge and even squirrel. I like shooting with that. But then. You brought that 22 along, and then I brought it mine along the next time, and then we were just kind of like snipers with those things. And for squirrels, like if you're specifically going for squirrels, like that's fun to me, where you can, uh, you know, sit there and just wait them out and shoot those things with the 22. It's more enjoyment, and you know, like hitting a smaller target with a little tiny bullet. Yeah, and even when we were rabbit hunting. When you kick them up, they'll run hard for 10, 15 yards. But then if you don't bump them any more than that and you don't shoot at them right away, they'll stop Yeah, right. and, and just sit there. And you can shoot them with a twenty two. And I know I did that a couple times last yes. year. So it is kind of a, a horse apiece. The 12 gauge is always going to be, I mean, no matter what, the 12 gauge is pretty much always going to be the most versatile gun in the woods. You'd have a hard time finding a gun that is capable of more than a 12 gauge, but you know that the 22 is it adds an element and it's kind of fun. And especially if you don't, if one of you has a 12 gauge and another guy's got a 22, I think that makes it even better. And I, I think that was the most fun we had when we had the different guns because it just adds that extra element to uh, to everything. And it, it increases your range a little bit, you know. If the guy with the 12 gauge can't get them, the guy with the 22 probably can. Oh, for sure. I, 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 I got a problem with the 12. I like to just mag dump, but. <laughs> well, you know, when we're out there, too, putting on those miles, a lot of times we'll run into some interesting finds out there. Oh, for sure. I found so many cool and weird stuff, and... Honestly, it's more of like a scouting mission, too. Bringing it back to deer, even though we weren't kind of done about deer, but, like, you learn so much more about their patterns in the winter and where they winter. That's, that's And Colby will attest to that. That's the best time to scout is the winter or spring. Yeah, for sure. 
But even on the topic of deer, some of the dead ones we've found over the past couple of years. Yeah, what did I find two years ago? Like six fawns? Yeah, six, seven, eight fawns, something like that. Between... Yeah, I found one, two, three, four, five bucks? This past winter? Yeah, five yeah. bucks. The one was hit shot with a cross, or a bow, crossbow. Um, but the other four, I have no idea. Pretty well, that... close to the road, so I don't know if they were getting road hunted or what. I find it hard to believe that five bucks would be dead. Four bucks would be dead, but three of them were in the same field too. So I, I don't know what was going on over there. It is weird. I, I don't know. I, I could see it. There's always the case it could be road hunting. It's just, it seems weird to me if you were gonna shoot one off the road, especially like at night or whatever. Wouldn't you think those people would go and take the deer, like for meat? Well, that's what I thought. Like that's exactly what I thought. But then it's like, why just shoot and then leave it? Yeah, like, just to be the worst possible human being out there? Yeah, like, just to kill, basically. Yeah, like, you know, it's not right to shoot them and take them back for the meat, but... If you're gonna do it. Yeah, to a certain extent, I can be okay with that. Like, at least that meat's not going to waste. I can't, you know, it's not a good thing that you're doing that, but to just shoot them for the sake of shooting them and leaving them dead in the field, that is just the lowest of the low. Yeah, that, that's just killing the kill. Yeah, that's pointless. But that one that you found that was shot with a, a bow or a crossbow, that one was a nice buck. Yeah, that was one we had on camera quite a bit. My uncle ended up, my uncle had him at like 10 yards and didn't shoot him, obviously. He probably, looking back that it's sitting in my living room, he's like, yeah, I probably should have because at that time he had both his brow tines too. But, um, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just kind of how she goes, at least in that same sense. At least we ended up finding him, and, you know, at least he is now in your living room. I mean, obviously not how you want him to go, but you get some sort of, you know, meaning to it, I guess, when you have a a trophy like that, a memory like that. It's something of a... Uh, uh, you know, recourse for the death like that. But yeah, that was, we always seem to, to find things easier when we're not looking for it. Like when we're out squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting, we'll end up finding that stuff. Even driving down the road, going from one property to the next, you found a, maybe an even bigger buck. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the whole, like, even <laughs> driving down the road in your truck and you see one sticking out of the side of the snowbank, you know. It's just, just getting out of the house is really, really what it's all about for me. And then um, even on my property, I learned so much and I moved so many stands because of what I see in the winter, which I don't know if people want to take that with a grain of salt because their winter patterns are definitely different than their summer pat- patterns, but their winter patterns are a lot closer to November when it's prime time to be out in the woods than it is to September. So, you know, I, I take note. And even if it's just where they're bedding, like they're going to bed there all year round. So it's just to learn, like you can so much benefit to going out in the woods in winter. Yeah. And I feel like you're more willing to walk through areas that you wouldn't like once you've said, you know what, either it's the end of January and the season's over like legally or even, you know, late December, early January, where maybe it's still open, but you've called it, you know, you're waving the white flag, you know, then you're more willing to walk around in other places yeah. where now if you bump deer, you're like, okay, I, I'm not worried about it. I'm not hunting them anymore this year. And that's almost better. Like, you bump deer, you know that's where they're, where they're going to be. Yeah, you, you end up being like, oh, that's weird. I never thought that deer would be bedding in this spot exactly but you probably remember that then come fall yeah so you know there's it's more than just getting out to hunt you can do a little bit of learning you can do a little bit of scouting and you get to have a lot of fun because it's not like deer hunting you don't have to be quiet you get to walk around you get to talk with your buddies you know you just get to have a good time that's what i like the most 
Yeah, a hundred percent. That's kind of my. That's my thing about you know in the summer months when we get to go out fishing. You know, I, I don't think I've ever caught a, a fish that, measures up to shooting a deer at this point. But, you get to be, out on the boat, enjoying food and beverages, maybe some music, laughing it up, talking, spending quality time, like, you know when when deer hunting's great, but the silence and the monotony and trying to not move, not make a noise, not do all that stuff. It can kind of get to be a lot. And it's nice to have those times where you can be out in the woods or on the water or whatever and actually having a conversation and having a, a good time. Agreed. Totally agree. Not that, you know, deer hunting isn't, but it's it does get... If you're hunting by yourself, it gets boring, but start thinking about all these weird stuff and <laughs> yeah it's doing? it's nice even you know that uh, i think it was when we were small game hunting at one point we took some of my one of the turkeys i shot and we had turkey sandwiches out there we brought the little uh the yeah. little portable grill and you know we That's wrapped it in some tin foil what's that that's the best turkey sandwich I've ever had in my life. It was good, man. Just a day of small game hunting. We brought some lunch, cooked it up out there. That was a really, really cold day, but, I mean, it was a good time. Yeah, it was like 12 degrees. I don't know what we were doing, but. Having fun, passing the time, you know. This winter months, you got to make something out of it. But, you know, speaking of fishing, too, I know a lot of people are going to be ice fishing out there if we ever get any ice. I know there's, up north, there's there's been plenty, and that ice has been made for a while yet, but I, I would venture to say that Lake Winnebago is still probably wide open. Oh, it did, for sure. I mean, I'm just starting to see even some of the ponds and smaller lakes around here starting to get ice on them. Because it's either been too warm or too windy. So, I mean, yeah, it, hope. It's gonna, I don't know. I don't even worry about it until late, this, late January at this point. Right. Spearing. You're worried about spearing. Right. I mean, yeah, I don't ice fish, so it's kind of like, you know, it is what it is till then. Right. Right. I would think it, you know, it'll be, we'll get some ice. It'll get cold enough. It'll get there for the ice fishing and. If it's not around here, you just got to go up north a little bit further, but that's always a good time. And then, like you said, I mean, before you know it, we're going to be thinking about sturgeon spearing pretty quick. Oh, and I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, you got nice new shack, and hopefully uh, try and make something happen after one of the best years, well... I mean, we've had some good years, but last year had to be one of the best. Yeah, first, I mean, yeah, for sure. I'm hoping to, you know, it's always a good day when, you know, a good season when somebody spears one, not to mention you spear, what, three, four of them, and the group speared a pile of them between both our groups, so. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like what we were experiencing, or what you would experience at deer camp, you know, even if somebody shoots one. It's like that, you know, it's the best day ever. Yeah. It doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be somebody you're sitting with. You know, it, you can go to the bar and, you know, somebody could roll in with a big one in the back of their pickup truck and it's a fun day to go and see it and hear the story and whatever. So, you know, we kind of get that same thing with spearing. You go to Wentz afterwards, the fish are hanging up, you hear the stories, and I know that. Sturgeon spearing for a lot of people around us is probably the one thing that gets people through the winter. Yeah, I, you know me, that's my favorite time is going to Wentz and just enjoying it. I really like the social aspect of it and whatnot. Are you going to be one of the guys that doesn't check to see if your stand is or your shack is ready until like the week before? Um, we, I went in that the other day actually and it looked pretty there's no mice or anything in it or hmm. put in dryer sheets apparently that's supposed to keep them 
out and so it was yeah everything was pretty good 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 i've heard mike was already in all of his shacks getting them all ready he i think he had the heat going in there he was going through everything getting everything organized he's already ready to go that's funny it doesn't surprise me (laughs) no not one bit he'd probably have the shacks out there now if there was ice oh for sure (laughs) start scouting now Somebody's oh, out there scouting, I'm sure. I love Mikey. What's that? Says you gotta love Mikey. Yeah, yep. Gotta love him. He's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, anything else that... I mean, there's obviously plenty of things you can do. Shed hunting is in there a little bit closer to spring. Um, but, I mean, they can drop them whenever, and if there's not as much snow on the ground, you can... Get in there a little bit earlier. I know we usually aren't afraid to do that. If if the snow's off, it's better to get them before the mice get at them. So you could kind of throw shed hunting in there. Yeah. Um, when did we find that one? Two years last year, two years ago, we found one like January. So you know the, the younger ones, the, the younger ones kind of hold on longer. Typically, it depends on the winter and whatnot. But the bigger boys are still drop early. Yeah. I never find right away. I always find them in like you know April. <laughs> right yeah yeah i mean other than that you know it's it's uh it's a tough tough couple months through the winter but i mean those are typically the things we're going to do to make the most of it i can't think of anything else off the top of my head that we would focus too much time on oh i mean that's pretty much how we survived the winters here in the great state of wisconsin it's not a bad time too, you know, maybe you got a little bit of money from the holidays, you're looking at maybe some new purchases you want to make for the following year. It's not a bad time to do some of that. Right. Nothing uh, like a fun package in the mail to cheer a guy up. Yeah, no kidding. Another, you know, a little bit cutting wood. I, I enjoy getting out and do that. I know a lot of people aren't like, oh, what are you doing that for? Oh, it's just kind of nice to go out and do something. You can improve your deer habitat a little bit if you got to cut some trees and, or cut down that branch that was in the way during bow season. And, I don't know. There's always something to do. Always something to do. You get a good day for that, too. It's not a bad idea now. I mean, i got to imagine if you're running a chainsaw for half a day, you're probably going to be sweating buckets no matter how cold right. it is. Yeah, or if you're the one lifting all the wood, too. Yeah, ah, it's true. Like, it's, it's almost like a nice little workout in a sense. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I guess the, the overarching idea here is, you know, you can make the most of these winter months. You don't have to let them pass by without getting outside or getting into the woods or, or hunting anything at all. There's plenty of things you can do and plenty of ways to make it fun. Get a couple of buddies together, go out, shoot some squirrels, grill some brats, you know, hang out, get out on the ice when it's safe, make the most out of it and... You know, we'll be back, back around to warm weather before you know it. For sure. I'll be looking forward. Yeah, me too, 100%. Well, like I said earlier, we want to keep this one a little bit shorter episode. Um, just a little something different here, trying to give you guys some ideas for getting through the winter months and hopefully a, a couple good ideas for how you can spend some of those days off without much to do and uh yeah that's that's about it so we appreciate you guys tuning in as always make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already and as always we'll see you guys next time